thank you, Lord, for technology this morning and that we could share your word once again. It's new every morning, Father. And I'm so excited about Jesus. I'm excited about our country right now because there's only one way we could survive, and that's the hope of glory. That's the word of God that became flesh. That's being like Israel was. When you look at this psalm today, brothers and sisters, Psalm 143, and David was a man after God's own heart. I mean, it ripped into my heart this morning when I was sitting here looking at the highlighted verses and a couple that I didn't highlight. And, and, and I said to myself, Lord, all scripture is good. Commentaries are good. A multitude of counselors is good because it's all good, Father. It comes from the word of God. And all we got to do is get up and seek you in the morning when we wake up. Give me Jesus. I look at your word this morning, God, and I pray it touches someone's heart. This little 12 verse read and it touched my heart again. The commentaries touched my heart, Father. And I pray there's someone out there on the fence right now that's going to get over that fence. And it's so simple, but your faith in Jesus Christ. It's grace, people. Every one of us falls short of the glory of God. And man, this is so powerful this morning. For me to be here, for me to be alive and be able to just share my heart because it happened to me. I dropped dead. Happened three times in my life. And I shall not die, but live. And that's the only thing I can hold on to right now because I have my good days, my bad days. But I know, just like David, I could call upon you, Father. That, that falling in love with the word of God, the falling in love. Nobody knows anyone's hearts except you. And I thank God for that. Because people's opinions don't matter when it comes to the word of God. Even the thief on the cross got in. He didn't get baptized. He didn't, he didn't speak in tongues. He didn't cast out devils. He just believed who you were. And you looked at him and said, you're with me forever. And that's what grace is. It's... It's putting our faith in you, Lord Jesus, just like David was doing in this psalm today. So I pray people hear the word of God and it penetrates. Hear my prayer, O Lord. It's almost like he's begging here in the beginning. And he was a man after God's own heart. He said, give ear in my supplications. That's plural. In thy faithfulness, answer me. And in thy righteousness. How many times do we get up and say, thank you, Lord, for imputing your righteousness? How many times do we just sit there and cry and say, Lord, I need you. I need help. How many people, they're not going to tell me they don't struggle. Everybody struggles. I struggle. But I can't lean on my own understanding. I have to try to get up and live by the will of God. You know, and that's important that we want to get up and fall in love with God's word and do God's word and serve the God that we say we love. Man, there's so many things, our part, that we have to do. You know, when I was reading this this morning, brothers and sisters, I realized how tough it was for David, how, how he had to go hide in the woods. Because he didn't want to confront Saul. And, and, you know, how many people do we run from? You know, I'm not the kind of person that, that doesn't want to answer people. But sometimes people need to got to go where we go. You got to go to God. You got to sit at his feet. You got to be still and know that he's God. You got to read the Bible and believe that's him talking to all of us. And, and that's what happened with David. Verse 2, listen to what the word says today. 
and enter not into judgment with thy servant. He's one-on-one -on -one with God. How many times do we talk about this in this prayer group? About getting one-on-one -on -one with God. Sometimes that's where a person needs to go. They need to fall on their knees. They need to put the word of God into their heart and start doing what the word of God says to do. It's quite an instruction book. And the word of God doesn't lie, brothers and sisters. And David knew that. And that's why this, this is one of the most powerful Psalms in the Bible when you're trying to get into a relationship with our Savior, our God, because he supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Now, if you want to know somebody, this is where you got to be. You got to be in communication with the one that first loved you. You know? I say that all the time to people. It's, it's an addiction to get up every day and worship God. I wish, I wish the rest of my family would start getting addicted. As much as I pray for everybody, there's some of them that are not getting there right now, and I got to keep praying for them. It's because prayer changes. You know, I, I got so much out of this this morning. And enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. Galatians 2.16, you know? Galatians 2.16, let's look at it. Because I, I, I was there this morning. You know what Galatians 2.16 tells us? Let me just share the word of God with everybody this morning, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Now, can you just receive that? Even if we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the work of the law shall no flesh be justified. And it parlays with Philippians 3 9. You know, you know what I always say when I start bringing out these scriptures, we got to pay attention. If my people, if my people, Jesus said, search the scriptures. When you search the scriptures and read, just what I read, that's confirming you're saved by grace and grace alone in Jesus Christ. Same way the thief got saved on the cross. You don't have to argue with people. You just got to believe the word of God. For the enemy had persecuted my soul. That's all these poor people that I get phone calls on every day, brothers and sisters. Yeah, it must be nice to be on the front line. And you you give your phone number and put it up on an internet. But you got to do your part. You got to answer the calls. You got to pray for people. You got to fast. You got to do the things that Christ tells us to do in the Gospels. I'm serious. It says here, the enemy had smitten my life down to the ground. He had made me to dwell in darkness. You don't think David, a man after God's own heart, this is him crying out to his, his God, his Savior. He had to walk, how? By faith. Faith is believing something you really don't, you just put your faith in what the good Lord says when we read this book. I understand Ernie, because he reads his Bible. But very few people read their Bible. That's where grace comes in. Even believing in his name, that's all the thief. Uh, it's not fair that the thief gets in and then someone else don't get in, is it? That's why it's important to get people saved. That's why it's important for you and I to be witnesses to darkness. Let me continue here today. 
He had made me to dwell in darkness as those have been long dead. In other words, that's all we are. We're, we're going to be out here and we're the only light that can penetrate darkness right now because of our faith in Jesus Christ. And we're to acknowledge him in all our ways. You can figure that one out. I've been trying to figure it out for years and God's still working on my heart. He told me some more things early this morning that I need to do. And you know what? When you're walking in the spirit and it lines up with the word of God, why can't you just receive it and become a doer of what God shows you? You need to either change your life a little. You know, there's no guilt or shame. It's about being a servant of the most high God. God wants us to get our houses cleaned up, which is, it's not the temple, it is us, our bodies. And there's a battle going on in everybody, every day. You heard what the brother Jay said earlier. If anybody says they're not battling, they're not telling the truth. Because you, you even have your own enemies are in your own house sometimes. I pray for a lot of my relatives more so now than ever before. I had one have a stroke down in Alabama. It took him an hour to get her to the hospital. She's our niece. She's 59 years old. It really affected my wife. It was her sister's child. You know, you, you say to yourself sometimes, Lord, I need help. And our help comes from the Lord, people, providing you're paying attention to your Bible. You know, I heard Ernie speak yesterday. If you're sinning, your prayers ain't getting answered. How many people really examine themselves? How many people really sit down and say, Lord, I can do better? Here. David said here this morning, Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. What do you think? We're, we're better than David? No. We're in the same battle. Just thousands of years later. And he says, my spirit overwhelmed within me, my heart within me is desolate. In other words, got an empty heart. No feelings at all. You ever get that way? I get that way quite often. Even with Christians, because they don't listen. Something within them stops them from following the word of God. Putting God's word. Simple little things like, please. I like to, I like to have good times with my family, but there's got to be a time where I can rest, there's got to be a time where people got to understand, just like anywhere else, you make appointments. Because there's too many people today that need help, period. And in between it all, everybody has chores. My brother Jay had to do work on a garage today. I was shocked to see him come in for a moment, you know? Because I understand how hard life is. I've been living it for 71 years. Just like when someone's got to do something in their family, they drop what they're doing, they go do it. Well, that's, that's daily for everybody. Even for Charlie. That's why it's very important to spend one hour with God every day. Period. Make time for the one that you're going to be with forever. It'll take a lot of the bumps out of your, your road. You won't fall in the hole so often. You'll, you'll, you'll stay on that narrow road a little better when you have that relationship going, making him like I did, that song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Well, that's what David, David was tuned in, man. He says, I remember the days of old, verse 5. I meditate on all thy works. 
Come on now, brothers and sisters. If you're in the word of God, you're going to meditate on everything God talks about. It's going to be part of your heart. That's just the way it goes. Why? Because God loves you. He saves you. He puts the Holy Spirit in you. Why? So you can walk in the truth of the word of God. And you'll see that the word of God works. God makes things happen for those that believe in him. I've been preaching this from the time I was a baby Christian, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and, and God will make a way. And I've always landed on my feet, people, even in my darkest hours. So David saying, I remember the days of old, I meditate on all thy works, I muse on, in other words, consider the work of thy hands. I said that to someone yesterday. How could you not believe in the creator king? Just look around you. Look at the different plants. Look at the different animals. Look at the personalities going on in people. A lot of things happen when you go through some storms and you come out praising God, brothers and sisters. David said, I stretch my hands forth unto thee, my soul thirsted after thee as a thirsty land. Well, I've been telling people that if you're hungry and thirsty, you know people that are hungry and thirsty. They're always in fellowship, you know? I just ordered another mat for the house. When you come into my house, we're going to talk about Jesus, people. I talk about Jesus Christ every day to somebody because he's my Lord and Savior. Even when I go out, I make sure I acknowledge him. I watched a woman walking out of a place and lighting a cigarette. You know, I couldn't leave that place without telling her I'm going to start praying for her. And she's a believer. She's in bondage, people. How many people do you know like that? It's everywhere today. You know, guy, just go into church. And that woman called me yesterday. Please, Pastor Charlie, will you pray for my husband? I don't even know the guy. She sent me his name, his phone number. Next thing you know, I'm getting texts from the man. And I said to him, where do you live? Where do you go to church? Shock and awe. Because they're sitting in churches that are an abomination to the word of God. And you wonder why people got problems. Sometimes I think it's better to just sit down and open up your Bible and read and be still. That's what David did every day. He was... He was so tuned in to God that when he got up in the morning, he prayed. Go back and look at all the Psalms. Listen to the verbiage of his relationship with God. I mean, we don't even come close sometimes. But if you're reading the Bible every day, you're there. God's feeding you. All you got to do is diligently seek him. I said that in the warfare prayer today. Hebrews, he rewards those that diligently, that means you're, you're focused on having your relationship with your Savior. David turned around in this psalm this morning. He's talking to God. Listen to what he's doing here. He even said, hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit is failing. He says, my spirit faileth. You don't think David was struggling? Put yourself in David's place when Saul was looking to get him and he hid out in the woods. I mean, he says, hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit faileth, hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down unto the pit. 
He didn't want to be like those that are going where? To the pit. Nobody's going to tell me David didn't believe in God. And he was struggling. Again, he says, verse 8, cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. I, I, I smile when I see this in scripture because as I got older, you know, when I was younger, it wasn't about Jesus in the morning. It was about the business. It was about making money. It was about, I'm in a different place in my life. God rescued me. And in the morning when I wake up, it's a, it's the sweetest, most precious thing I could do for anybody is share the word of God. Play some praise music. And boy, I sing every morning, people. I'm muting my phone and I'm singing along with the, the lyrics and the words because I'm a believer and he inhabits the praise of his people. And David here. In the morning, it's right here in scripture. He says, cause me, David, King David, to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. What is God's loving kindness? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, come to me and I will give you rest. Okay. For in thee do I trust. In thee do I trust. So you see where David is? in the morning so when you get up in the morning say thank you lord jesus that's what i did this morning and i greeted all my little critters i went out and looked at the the garage at something my wife asked me to look at and i said when i'm done with the prayer group i'll, I'll go back to doing some other stuff here today dear see you later travel fave but listen to what says here why did he get up in the morning? Listen to what verse 8 says. For in thee, in other words, in the word of God do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. That's why you need the word of God permeating each and every one of us every day in our lives. Because David's pleading with God here and he says, I need this to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. That's why you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, daily unto the Lord. It's not just about prayer and fasting. It's about asking God to guide your steps, that you can draw closer to God so he can draw closer to you in spirit, brothers and sisters. And, and, you know, I was studying this this morning because this is a very strong psalm to really intertwine your own heart into, like David did. You can do it, too, with your Savior every day. You can have that relationship. You won't be afraid to die anymore. That God's spirit. And... It, it's such a, a, a beautiful way to study the scriptures. That's why I like the Psalms. And what did he say every morning? This is David now. Learn something here. He says, deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. Did you hear of Jay this morning? It's every day for Jay. The enemy wants to trip us every day. The enemy's out there, man. You got to know who your God is. And, and David said, deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. I flee unto thee. What does that mean to you? It means you go to God. You've got to be in a relationship with God. David said, I flee unto you and then hide me. Teach me to do so. I mean, it's so powerful. Why? Because God said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I'm living it right now as an example to other people. There isn't a person here that shouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. 
if you're in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Everybody here knows how to read. Everybody here knows how to study. And that's where passivity comes in. And that's the devil, people. You know what I, I say about Christians? They got a lot of excuses and no power and no zeal and no boldness for the God they say they serve. And lately, my favorite expression, and God forgive me, I'm telling people, you're all lukewarm. You're not getting up every day. I'm not saying it to people in our prayer group. I'm talking about the woman that wrote me telling me I need to open up on Saturday night because people need deliverance and people need this. You need Jesus every day. And I understand people have to go to work. I had to work for many years. But look at this. Teach me, it says, teach me to do thy will. Verse 10. For thou art my God. So in other words, if you're being like David, you and I, that means we got to go to God. And in the morning, we need God in our life every day. I always quote that scripture in, in Proverbs. It's in my heart. Submit your plans before the Lord and you will succeed. Don't do anything without having fellowship and union with the Holy Spirit and God. The Holy Spirit will point you to scripture. The Holy Spirit will bring repentance to your heart, godly sorrow, when you're just sitting there, you got nothing to do, you don't need to watch television or anything. Open your Bible. You certainly don't have to be addicted to the God of sports, and there's a lot of Christian men and women that are being led astray by the God of sports. And don't blame me. When Worley heard it straight up, the same way I've heard it from the demons. Now, either you believe what's going on or you don't believe. Me, I choose to believe. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities. I don't have a problem preaching it, people. Teach me to do thy will, for thy, thou art my God, thy spirit. Listen to what David said about God's spirit. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of righteousness. You know, when I read this, I'm powwowing with God. I'm asking God, don't let go of me. Keep me. Hold me close. Never let me go. I sang that song yesterday to Jesus right here in this prayer group. Draw me close to you. Played it by Michael Smith. Eleven and twelve. And this finishes the reading of Psalm 143. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. Do you hear that? That's why you can be saved by believing in the name. That's better than no faith at all. He's, he's given us such a simple gospel that it's not about our works. I gave that to you out of Galatians 2 today. I read it to you. And for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness sake, bring my soul out of trouble. You hear what David was saying to God? A man after God's own heart? And this was his daily, you could call it whatever you want. He was, throughout the Psalms, you go back and spend six months just reading the Psalms. You'll grow in the Lord. You'll be, your heart will start to become like God's because you're going to start listening to the word of God and becoming a doer of how God would want you to be. That's that's what people look at when they, they watch us. They watch how we act. How many times, Ernie, Ernie's been in here for over four years. How many times he said to me, wow, you've changed a little now. Of course you change. You get into the word of God, God changes you from the inside out, people. You become a new creature 
in Christ. That's what being born again is all about. And the final verse, because he, he says, the righteousness say, bring my soul out of trouble. So he's asking God to correct them. And of thy mercy, cut off my enemies. That's all the temptations. We become overcomers because of the blood of Jesus Christ. You actually learn how to resist the devil. And let me tell you something. I've been practicing it for years. I'm getting better. I'm not falling by the wayside the way I used to. I, I look at the situation. I know it's not lining up with God's word. And I say, not today, devil. Ha ha. It ain't happening. And I get back to praising God. And out of the mercy, cut off my enemies, destroy all of them that afflict my soul. For I am what? Thy servant. And see, when you're trying to be a servant of God and you're you're putting your left foot in front and you're you're coming to God and you're diligently seeking him God's going to take care of you then you'll start to see no weapon formed against you will prosper but let me let me just share a little bit about commentary with this today because it was really good you know unless you've been engaged in the Lord's battles, and most of the church is not engaged in what we have learned in deliverance over the years. So you can't get mad at people. You got to be a light to them. Just like the, the woman that sent me a text yesterday, she said, Pastor Charlie, can you help my husband? I don't even remember the woman. She probably got married. I think, I think she got married years later. I knew the, the last name. She came to this ministry through my brother, Mike Gonzalez, who's down in Florida with Remnant Rising. I haven't talked to him about it yet. But you may not understand this prayer today. For it is the cry of a soldier in combat. And you don't know. When I read this commentary, it hit me pretty hard because I was a soldier in combat. And, and I could relate to what the Thomas Nelson was trying to teach us as the way David was, because David was a warrior. David went to war. Uh, Jay talked about it in, in 1 Samuel yesterday. And, you know, I can go into Exodus to show you that when God's people cry out to him, he answers people. So that's why it's important what a friend we have in Jesus. What a savior. This is also a, 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 a prayer of confessing our sins. Like 1 John 1, 9. Because that's in the commentaries too today. Hear me. The first six verses depend on God's grace and faithfulness, not on your righteousness. Tell God what is happening in your life. David was in the, the dust and in the darkness. He felt like a thirsty man that was dying in the desert, brothers and sisters. You ever get that way? How about I was that way in 100 degree weather out here? Sharon looked at me and I needed to get in the house drink something, and get in a cold shower. Because I was out there sweating my brains off, trying to keep up with the work I do here on my property. So when I read a, a, a commentary, I can bear witness to what I was reading in God's word. And God answers. When God does not answer prayer, it is though he turned his face away from us and we sink into the grave. Do you find strength and joy in answered prayer? Well, I do. I get excited. When things are going right, I'm on top of the world with Jesus. But when they're not going right, I'm crying out to him for mercy and help. I've been crying out for a group of people right now to help me with that building he gave me. And that's going to go down. God's answering. Just the, 
the thing the girl sent me last night, she said, I got a sister in the Lord that wants to jump into deliverance. She's on fire. Can we open up on Saturday night? And I wrote her back. That's already in the plans. But you got to wait on the Lord. I'm still trying to get everything set up so that it's not a halfway house, that when we open up on a regular diet and I post it on the internet, people can travel, people can come, they can spend the weekend. It doesn't cost them a penny. They just got to get there. And you got to have workers to pray with people. It's about praying with people. My house shall be called the house of prayer. It's about preparing the way the Bible says to do things and, and to to constantly, man, we, it, we the people got to do something right now, real time. That's the time we're all living in. And I'm glad other people are seeing it. When God did not answer the prayer, you need the strength that you get from prayers being answered. And she wrote me and she said, can we open the church up on Saturday night for prayer? Last time I did that, we went all night. And the Lord reminded me, you're not doing all night prayer. But you can open up once a month. I've been telling you guys, we're getting ready to do this. We're, we're a heartbeat away right now. Just got to get a few more people involved. David met with the Lord, what? Each morning. And he got his orders for the day. So, see, when, when you read in the Bible... You're being filled with the word of God. It doesn't, it doesn't return void. Put God's word, the more you read, put it into action in your life. And then, you know, he did not know how to walk. He trusted God's spirit to lead him as you yield yourself to God's word. And that's something. That even myself, I have to be a witness to all of you, you know. I have to put God's word into practice all the time so other people can see and hear the testimonies that are going on. Because everybody should have testimonies. If you're really diligently seeking God, you're going to be talking a, a lot about the goodness of God. Especially when you're putting God's word into and you're doing it, you know? And then at the end of this, he asked God, David was in the dust in three, and only it took the word of God to raise up David. Well, that's what it took to raise me up many years ago. I read my Bible every day when I was a baby Christian. I was hungry and thirsty. They mocked me in the workplace because all I did was read a Bible and talk about Jesus. I was pretty blessed from the beginning on and going. And then I ran into trouble because I wasn't obeying the word of God the way it was written. So I got spanked. Okay. David wanted to fight the Lord's battles and establish the righteousness in the land. Well, the only way we can do that is through true prayer means that we serve God, not that God serves us brothers and sisters and and you got to you got to really understand that because i i sit here and i read a lot of different little books in the morning just to prepare for what i'm going to say in front of anybody that's going to listen to my rhetoric and this is another marvelous prayer of david it is an urgent appeal for help and the only way you're going to get there is to learn how to pray to god david had no inhibitations. He opened up his heart to God. Oh, that we should learn how to pray like David was praying here this morning in this psalm, brothers and sisters. David appealed to the faithfulness and righteousness of God for the answers. Isn't that exactly what believers are to do when they sin? And that's why I told you, Every time you sin, just confess it. You know how much the enemy hates me? They've told me that. We can't get nothing to stick because when you recognize it, you confess it. That's all you got to do. 
1 John 1 9. I learned to sing that song at Hegwish. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And man, this psalm is of faithfulness, of God's righteousness. The psalm is a very wonderful prayer, and it can fit into your daily life if you would read it and then start making application in a relationship with your Savior. It was also the plea of the nation of Israel. And that's why I brought up earlier Exodus, because I read this this morning. I also looked it up and reread it in Scripture. And in, in Scripture, I went, you know, I always go into Scripture looking at stuff. And I, I think I did it in my, my big Bible. Because what I really learned was how merciful God is this morning. I wrote I wrote myself a note. Yeah, I did. I put it in a big Bible. I started in verse 21, second, uh, chapter 2 of Exodus. And when Moses was content to dwell with the man that he gave Moses, Zipporah, his daughter, and she bare him a son, and he called his name Gershom. For he had said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And, and so the word of God comes in now, and it says, And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of their bondage. You remember, they were in chains to Pharaoh. And they cried, and their cry came up to God by reason of the bondage. So that's all we got to do when we're enslaved by the enemy is cry out to God for help. Just like that woman's husband texted me last night. I'm not kidding you. You talk about perfect timing. What am I going to do? Say no to the people? No, I'm going to open the church. They can come over and I'll do deliverance on them. He's close enough to come live and in color. And guess what? He's going to be a testimony. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. I see too many people falling short when they're trying to take care of people because they didn't do this. You didn't do that. Maybe you need to do something, too, to activate the whole situation. That's why it's very important, brothers and sisters, if you're going to play with deliverance, you better be in the word of God and be in a doer of God's word. Only because Jesus taught it all. And all you for that, just I do it all the time. I go back to the gospels and I read. Here, it says here, I'm going to close here. It came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. The children of Israel sighed by reason of their bondage. So what did they do? They cried. And their cry came unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard their what? Groaning. And God remembered his what? His agreement, his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel. And look what happened. God had respect unto them. And where does that take my heart? Well, where, where should it take your heart right now, brothers and sisters? Okay, back to 1 John 1, 9. Why did God have respect unto Israel? Because he is faithful and righteous. And in Romans, in the book of Romans, Paul tells what Israel's problem is today. You fast forward even to the Messianics today, and they're still trying to go back to works, people. That's not pleasing to God. For God sent his only begotten son to be the propitiation for our sins. I played that today in our song role. What a friend we have in Jesus. For they were being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. This is also the trouble Gentiles have. They are working 
with religious spirits. They are trying to do something to please God. My brothers and sisters, God's already done something for all of them. He sent his son to the cross to pay the penalty for sin. You please him when you accept what he done for you. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to every man that believes. That's Romans 10, 4. And David is saying to God in this psalm today, and all you got to do is read this psalm over and over again and get up close and snuggle with your Savior, with your God. Because at the end he said, cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. So not only in the morning, you're going to get up, you're going to put your faith in the word of God. You're going to walk in it, and I will lift up my soul unto thee. And, and David said to him at the end, he said, deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. So Jesus Christ is our covering people. He's the answer to all our problems. He said, come to me and I will give you rest. He died so that we could live. This reveals David's trust in God as his only refuge and his only hope. And the last verse of the commentary says, Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God, should be the daily prayer of every child of God. So I pray somebody gets blessed by this reading, and God bless everybody. Thanks for listening.